Hi everyone. Critical physics, momentum and impulse, lesson two. Yes, first lesson we have learned about momentum, definition of momentum and formula of momentum. This is from the first lesson. Momentum of a particle is the product of an object's mass and its velocity. Formula is P equals M times V. Unit kg times meter per second. We have learned last lesson. And then change in momentum delta V. Another name is impulse. Delta P equals P final minus P initial. M times V final minus M times V initial. And delta P equals M times delta V. You can write. This is impulse first formula. Impulse. So last lesson we have learned also this one. It's coming from Newton's second law. We are making another formula. F net equals M times A. You know this is Newton's second law. For acceleration from motion, topic motion, you know, delta V over delta T. And then cross multiplication, you can write F net times delta T equals M times delta V. So impulse equals F net times delta T. Impulse equals delta P. So both of them we can use for formula of impulse. Let's continue. Question one. So question one. Let's read question one first. Today I have a I have a guest to read question for you. A student pu pushes a stationary desk of twenty five kg with a force of fifty n for. 20 seconds on a surface with a friction of 10 n. Calculate the magnitude of the final velocity of the desk. Thank you very much. We are going to carry on. We are going to answer. So what they said, there's a stationary desk. It means initial velocity is zero. Stationary desk, initial velocity is zero. We know that mass is 25 kg and force is 50 newtons. Time is 20 seconds. We can write all givens first before answer question. We can write everything, what we know with symbols. This is, it is gonna be best for you if you do that, it's gonna be easy for you to calculate to answer your question. First of all, Stationary desk, because of that, the initial equals zero meter per second. And then what we know, mass of object, 25, 25 kg. And force, apply force equals 50 newtons. We know that. What else we have? We have friction force. Friction force is 10 newtons. 10 newtons we have. What else we know? Time, delta V also. We know just acting time, delta T, sorry. Delta T is equal to 20 seconds. All right, all given here. What's going on here? You have a chair, but I will draw a box on it to make it easier for me. So we have one object and force is 50 newtons let's write force is 50 newtons we have 50 newtons here and then friction force your friction force is 10 newtons friction force symbol you know small f 10 newtons opposite direction of apply force and then all other givens we wrote already here first of all we can get f net all right to make it easy f net equals we can calculate F net equals apply force minus friction force. Apply force minus friction force, 50 newtons minus 10 newtons. 50, 50 minus 10, you can see, you don't have to write units here, it's fine. So 40 newtons. Our answer is 40 newtons for F net. Net force acting on the object, 40 newtons. Now we can show all solution, everything. I hope everything is clear now. So let's continue with our solution. F net times delta T equals mass times delta V. 
These are formula, two formula for impulse. And then you can write this formula, F net 50 minus 10, we explain why, because of different direction. And then times by 20, and then mass is 25. Delta V, you know delta V, what was it? V final minus V initial. Your V initial is equal to zero. And then when you calculate here, you are getting 800. 800 over 25 is giving you, 825 is giving you 32 meter per second. Our question one, done. I hope everything is clear. It is easy question. Let's continue with next question. Question two. Now we have similar question, but now what they ask, first of all, let's read our question. A car mass of 720 kg travels at 120 kilometers per hour per hour hits a wall and comes to rest. Collusion takes place in 0 0.00 seconds. Calculate the magnitude of force that the wall applies on the car. Yes, thank you very much for reading question. We are gonna carry on with our answer. First of all, for this question, what are we doing? As always, we are just writing givens. And then we can draw diagram also. We can, on the diagram, we can show everything. What's going on? Let's draw, let's show, and then let's write all givens. After that, we can carry on. We can answer our question. So there's a wall here. Just let's draw. Maybe we can change color to make it nice. OK. There's a car here. My car is ugly car, it's fine, <laughs> sorry. So you have a car here, it's coming with 120 km per hour. V initial equals 120 km per hour. This is given. And then mass of the car is given. Mass is equal to 720 kg, all right? And what else we know? Time, acting time, just equals 0, 0,002. Okay, so we know we initial, we know we final also because they said comes to rest. We final equals zero. Let's write that one also. After collision, we final equals zero meter per second. We can write unit is fine. After that, what we are looking for? Force, all right. So if you are looking for force, now easy to calculate. Let's see, because you know our formula, you remember our formula. What was it? F net times, F net times delta T time equals M times delta V. This is our formula. And then, you can just write all givens what we know. F net we don't know. We are going to calculate it now. Times, time is 0, 0,002. And our mass is 720 times. You are getting, the final is 0 minus 120 kilometer per hour. All right. Something is wrong here now. You know what? 120. We cannot use 120 straight. Why? Because kilometer per hour. What we said, velocity always in meter per second. We must convert it. How can we convert from kilometer per, kilometer per hour to meter per second? Divide by 3.6. So... 120 over 3.6 we have to use. So 120 over 3.6. As you see, I'm not calculating now because if you calculate it, you are going to get with decimal with long number. So I don't need that. Just use like this. It is much better, much easier for you. So F equals, F equals 720 times, maybe we can write F002 for now. It's fine. Let's write F times 0, 0,002 equals 720, 720 times 120 
over 3.6, but of course it is negative. And divide by, you just multiply everything here and divide by 0, 0.002. Finally, you are gonna get your force and then you will get answer. And you are getting your answer 12 million newtons. We can write 12 times 10 to the power of six newtons. And then this is your answer. We calculate, as you see, we are using this formula one more time, or impulse formula. All right, let's continue with next question. And then let's, next slide, let's say. So as you know, this lesson, these first three lessons about momentum, we are gonna carry on, we are gonna explain everything about momentum. After lesson three, we'll continue with past paper questions. Safety rules. So this one, all about momentum, impulse. So during accident, what you are gonna do. So I just left with you already, PDF format you can get, you can read everything about this safety rules. You can read, this is our first slide. And then we have another one, airbags and seat belts. So you can use, and after that, this one, another one, just you can just read all safety rules, please read, and then try to learn bending knees, also important to get just all about all physical principles. You can read this kind of things, you can carry on. And then another safety rule is here. We left on PDF format, please read all of them. So now let's go to graph questions. Force and time graph and impulse. So when we use this graph and then if they ask you calculate impulse or calculate change in momentum, we are gonna calculate area under this line and when uh, under force line, we can say we are reading area for, for example, this one now what we have four times X, four times six, this rectangular one we can call it. And then you have triangle here, four, eight minus four is four, this one times by six. Maybe we can calculate, it's fine, just let's make it. So what we have this area, first one, delta P1, and then we have delta P2, let's say. So for delta P1, we are busy with this area, rectangular area all. For delta P2, we are busy with this one, this triangle here. So how we are gonna calculate delta P1? As you see, four times six, delta P1 equals six times four minus zero. Let's do that because we are using formula F times delta T. All right, delta T we are using T final minus T initial four minus zero. And then you are getting 24 unit kg times because unit of impulse we know kg times M meter per second, yeah, kg times meter per second. This is 24, first one, first impulse, first change in momentum. And then delta P2, as you see, we have triangle here now. So delta P2, how can we calculate? Delta P2, this is delta P1. Delta P2, we are using six times eight minus four over two. I hope it's okay. We are busy with triangle now. So now you are getting what 12 right yeah 12 kg times 12 kg times meter per second i hope it's fine so this area area under force giving you impulse all right this is our graph and impulse we are gonna see some questions about that all right let's continue with next question yeah now it's here so graph question is coming. As you see, we have graph. First one, delta P1 is triangle here. And the delta P2 rectangular. And then another triangle, another side. But under time, under just timeline, you have negative. You must just be careful about that. So now let's see our answer for this kind of questions. I hope question is okay. Your force and time graph is given. They are asking you calculate the magnitude of the final velocity of the force. Wow. Not asking you directly change in momentum. You are going to use this graph to get change in momentum. 
delta p and then you are getting delta p, p first delta p equals total delta p del total impulse we can say m times delta v all right so you are going to calculate delta p first and then you are using this formula to get v final what we know delta p delta v equals v final minus v initial i hope this question is fine this question from past paper questions so calculate the magnitude of final velocity of objects all right they are asking you final velocity initial velocity what about initial velocity what they said about initial velocity calculate the traveling on 10 meters per second yeah initial velocity is 10 initial is 10 we are looking for final all right we are going to calculate now we can show all solution let's see what's going on all right okay so if net equals if net times delta t it means delta p you are calculating delta p let's just let's show here as you see six times three over two this is our delta p one let's write delta p one this area we are calculating how can we calculate six times three over two three minus zero you can say and then plus we have delta p as you see we have delta p two delta p two six times five how we are getting five from delta t eight minus three eight minus three giving you five this one this delta t is equal to five you are calculating delta p two i hope it's okay we are calculating area to get total impulse and then next one plus six times two over two how we are getting to 10 minus eight is two and then times by six over two because you have triangle here delta p3 plus even we have now delta p4 delta p3 is here and then delta p4 another triangle but it is negative now because of negative three negative force and the opposite direction means it means opposite direction negative three times two how we are getting to 12 minus 10 over two i hope everything is clear everything is fine you are getting total momentum when you get total momentum or oh, they are just giving you answer okay then we are using this formula because f times delta t giving you delta p delta p equals m times delta v what was the delta v formula v final minus v initial and then delta p you calculate already just you are going to calculate everything all delta p we, are, we can just get maybe we can calculate it's fine let's see six times three over two is nine plus six times five is 30 plus we have six minus what we have three all right when you calculate all what you are getting 30 plus 9 plus 6 minus 3 let's calculate all right it makes just 42 total delta p let's write total delta p here total impulse 42 is equal to 3 times v final minus 10 I hope everything is fine and divide by three each you can do that you know maths from now just maths so you are getting 14 equals v final minus 10 and 10 is going other side v final equals 24 meters per second this is our answer we don't have to give direction because they said magnitude of the final velocity I hope everything is fine. Let's continue with next question. Question four is coming now. Another graph question, another easy question. What they said, calculate the impulse. So they can ask you a question with only one step, just like this one, calculate the impulse, or they can ask you something else by using delta F times delta T equals M times V. 
So they can ask you just calculate delta P just like this question impulse you can calculate by using just calculating area or they can ask you another question delta F times delta T is equal to M times delta V. So using this formula, when you calculate all, they can ask you some different questions. All right, another step they can ask. But for now, in question four, we have only delta P. All right, let's calculate our area, all area, delta P one and delta P two. We are using, oh, going to other question, delta P two now. So delta P one, how can we calculate? 15 times, 15 times five minus zero and divide by two because you have a triangle here, delta P one. Delta P one equals 15 times five over two. What are we getting? 15 times five is equal to 75. And then you are getting 37,5 unit, as you know, kg times meter per second. And then delta P2, delta P2 we are calculating now, 15 times nine minus five, divide by two, no, just 15 times four, 15 times four and making you 60, you know, kg times meter per second. And then we are looking for total impulse, impulse equals delta P1 plus delta P2, and then 37,5 plus 60, and you are getting 97,5 kg times meter per second. This is our answer for question four. I hope you are getting it. So we have done question four. Let's go to question five. In question five, we have easy question, but this is very important because always you have to use in meter per second. If you don't know how can we convert, you cannot get correct answer. Convert 144 kilometer per hour to meter per second. This is our question. How can we calculate? First of all, we have to just, we have to know, divide by 3.6, 144, 144 kilometer per hour equals 144 over 3.6 meter per second. 144, let's calculate now, divide by 3.6. What are we getting? 40 meter per second. Converting unit, this is first one, kilometer per hour to meter per second. And another one, if mass is given in G, for example, 1000 G, how can we convert to kg? 1000 over 1000, 1000 over 1000, and then you are getting one kg. So from kilometer per hour, kilometer per hour to meter per second, Divide by 3.6. Why 3.6? How we are getting it? From kilometer to meter, as you know, 1,000 times by 1,000. And from hour to second times by 3,600 3, because of 60 times 60, 60 minutes and 60 seconds. When you simplify this, you are getting 1 over 3.6. I hope it's fine. Divide by 3.6. Just remember this one. And then from G to KG, divide by thousand all right we have done for today see you next lesson i hope everything is fine good luck everyone